This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hey guys, how's it going? Vincent here from the creativedojo.net. In this video, I just want to show you guys how to approach and create this kind of burning logo reveal or text reveal transition using completely Adobe After Effects. This is a pretty good tutorial if you are not really familiar with Checkpoint in particular, and it should give you a pretty good idea on how to kind of create a disintegrating particle effect. We'll also take a look at how to create some flame. So without wasting any time, let's go and take a look at what we're going to be creating today. So as you can see, this is a pretty interesting effect here. We kind of have this nice kind of dark uh, glowy environment. We have some pseudo 3D text, which is creating After Effects. Uh, we also have this interesting disintegration effect, which is kind of the main focus of this effect. And you can use this effect for many different applications, you know, sand disintegration, fire disintegration, a lot of other things uh, in particular. We'll also take a look at how to create these nice looking flames within After Effects. I know creating flames within After Effects tools and not using any third party clips or anything like that is a pretty hot topic right now, get it? But, uh, you know, we'll be focusing on that. And we'll also take a look at how to create these kind of heat waves. If you look very closely, we kind of have these little heat waves distorting our text. We'll take a look at how to create the environment. And we'll just focus on how to proceed creating an animation like this. So this is a pretty lengthy tutorial. So without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and take a look at how to do this with an After Effects here. So I'm going to minimize this. And uh, let's go ahead and create a new composition. And I'll try my best to kind of compress things down, but you know, still explain things that are crucial here. So I'll call this one logo source. We'll make it 1920 by 1080. We'll also make it seven seconds long and hit OK. And essentially, whatever we put in this composition is going to be disintegrated or burned. So this is the main comp that we want to add our object in, whether it's a logo image, you know, PSD or native text layers here. So let's go ahead and create a new text layer. We'll go to layer new text layer. This effect works a little bit better if things are kind of bolded. We'll also align it in the center of the composition. And we'll also bring this nice little texture that I have here. I got this from CG Textures. The link for this will be in the video description down below. And this is a very optional process here, but uh, essentially I want to cut out this texture according to the alpha of this text here. So I'll go and place the metal texture underneath the text. I'll go to track mat. And if you don't have track mat, go ahead and right click, go to column and select the modes or hit F4. And then let's go ahead and change the track mat from none to alpha mat. And what that's going to do is it's going to look at the layer above it and cut the texture out based on the alpha where it's transparent for the layer above it. So that creates this nice cutout for our texture. We'll go to color correction. We'll go to curves, apply it to the texture, and we'll just darken it quite a bit and add some contrast. We can always tweak this a little bit later. So this is just a nice little option here just to make it look a little bit more interesting. So now that we have that done, let's go and take a look at how to create the mats as well as the maps in this tutorial. So this tutorial here is pretty much going to be focused on these mats. These mats are the key to this whole transition effect here. And we use it to re reveal our logo as well as emit particles and control what gets emitted and what doesn't. So it's a very imp important step here. And if you can grasp the concept of mats and maps and but then After Effects in particular, you can do a lot of interesting things here. So let's go and create a new comp. And I'm going to call this one Source Mat. Now in this tutorial, we're only going to be creating one mat, which we're going to manipulate and freeze the time and such like that um, to kind of create different mats that will reveal stuff and emit stuff. But if you want it to be more precise, you can always create multiple mats, but we're just going to be creating one mat that we're going to manipulate for this whole tutorial just to kind of make it a little bit easier for us. So we'll call this mat and we'll hit OK. I'm going to go to the effects and presets and search in fractal noise. Now dragging the fractal noise into the mat here, I want to increase the contrast to about 250. So we have a pretty uh, sharp edge here. And we're going to use this mat to control the emission of particles. So right now these are kind of still. I'm going to go and hold that alter option and select the evolution stopwatch. We'll type in a quick expression here, time asterisk 25. And that will just add some random evolution to our fractal noise here. So what I want to do now is I want to animate this whole thing from black to white here. So I'm going to start around one and a half seconds. I will hit a keyframe for the brightness. And then I want to go ahead and decrease the brightness all the way down to the point where this whole thing is pretty much pitch black. So for me, that's looking like 150. I'll move about to the four second mark here. 
And then I'll change this to a value that will make this thing pretty much completely white. So let's say 150. So what we have now is a simple transition from black to white. And we'll be using these kind of white values here to cut out our tags and emit particles here. So this will make more sense once I actually do it here. So let's go ahead and create a new comp again, and we'll call this emitter mat. And this is the mat that we're going to be using to emit our particles here. So we'll go to actually we should call this a map because we won't actually be using any mats for this. So hit OK. And then let's go ahead and go to our project and kind of reorganize some of this stuff here. So I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this a logo. I'll drag this out. And it's very good practice to organize all your assets here and all your uh, comps. And I'm going to create a new folder here and we'll call this mats. And although this is titled mats, I'll just place all of our maps as well as our mats into this folder here. So we have something like this and then we have our logo here. So in this particular emitter map, I'm going to drag in our logo source. And then I'm going to drag in the source mat that we just created. So the transition right here. So essentially what I want to do is I want to tell After Effects to cut out this text based on the white values of this mat. So I'll go to the track mat for the logo source and select Luma mat. So now, as you can see, our text is revealing based on the luminance or the white values of the mat here. So right now we have nothing because the mat at this time is nothing. And then as we progress forward, our text reveals based on the white values of everything here. And we'll be using this data information here, the alpha channel and everything. We'll be using this mat layer here to control where particles are emitted here. So right now, at this point here, we're not going to have any particles because we have nothing here. And then as our emitter or map and transitions in, the particles will be emitted at these points here. So what I want the map here to do is to actually emit no particles at first, right? And then we want to start emitting particles, which is happening here. And then once the whole text emits particles right around here, this is pretty much where the whole text is going to be emitting particles. I want to shut this thing off because I don't want it to continue emitting particles, even though the text is already disintegrated. So I'll go into the matte source here. Hit keep in for the opacity. We'll move one frame by hitting page down and we'll set the opacity to zero. And since the source mat opacity is zero and our logo source is controlled by that, by the luminance, it's also going to disappear. So we have emission of particles and then shut off. And this is what we want for our emitters. I'm going to create a second mat here. So I go to composition a new composition and we'll call this one. Uh, let's see, text reveal. Hit OK. And we're going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to bring in our logo source. And then I'm going to bring in the source mat that we'll always be using in this particular case. So same thing here. Remember, last time the white values were the areas where, where the particles are going to be emitted. Well, we don't want our text to be shown at those white areas here. We want the white areas to control where things disappear. So I'm going to go to the logo source. And rather than selecting Luma mat, I'm going to select Luma inverted. And it's just going to cut out those white areas here. So this is pretty much the invert of what we had before. So uh, we have our text right here, this area here. We're missing some text here. If we go back into our emitter map, at the same time, you can see that we have a particle emission here and we have a hole here. So that kind of makes sense here. We don't want to have our text where the particles are being emitted because then that's not really disintegration here. So this is an interesting way to do that. So here we have our text and our text is going to stay visible. And then this is the part where it starts disintegrating. And that's pretty much perfect. So now that we have that all pretty much set up, let's go ahead and create one last mat here. So I'll go create a new composition and I'll call this heat map. And this is going to control the kind of heat wave that you saw in the beginning of the trailer here. So I'm going to create a new solid, a black solid. I'm going to call this particular and I'll go and apply trap good particular. Now this is a third party plugin. So you may not have this and uh, we'll apply particular. I'm also going to create a new background, bring it back there. So he, this is what we have so far. I'm going to go to emitter, change the emitter type from point to box, change the particle 
sec per seconds to about 50. Uh, you know, we'll go ahead and increase the size in X, and then we'll just place this thing at the bottom here. And then when I go to particle, maybe uh, increase the size up to like 50. So they're pretty large here. I also want to go down to the physics and really increase the gravity to like negative 250 here. And this will cause our particles to rise, kind of like how heat rises. And this is looking pretty good. We will change the color to red. This can actually be any color, but in this particular case, I'll just select the red because it's a little bit easier to see. And then we will also go and increase the size randomness, maybe increase the size to around 100 or so, maybe 150. And this will just control the heat waves here. So in this particular case, we'll be using the red to control the heat waves. So all the hard parts already done here. We already set up all the mats. The fun part begins now when we, when we start to construct everything together and you know bring everything together here. So let's go back to our main project. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the whole environment here. So I'm gonna go create a new composition. We'll call this main comp. And for the background, we'll bring in a metal texture. Maybe we'll scale this thing up a little bit. And then we'll hit P on the keyboard, uh, toggle the switches and modes, make it a 3D layer, and we'll push it back in Z space. Hit S on the keyboard and just scale it up. And then we'll go and apply a curves effect. And uh, we'll just do the same thing. We'll just decrease the brightness here, maybe add some contrast. Now I'm gonna do a quick little cheat here. I know I said that I wasn't gonna be using any more third-party plugins besides Particular, uh, but just to save some time, I'm gonna create a optical flares layer here, and you'll see why in a second, but this is completely optional because uh, this can easily be done uh, with After Effects effects. But I'll just apply a optical flares. I'll also apply a fast blur. I always like to apply a blur to my flares. And I'll also apply a curves effect as well as a tint. And we'll just shut the tint for now. We'll go into the options here. And I'm gonna select a basic light here. Very, very, very simple. Just to delete some of this extra stuff here. So essentially all we want is the glow. And as you can see, this is pretty easy to create uh, with an After Effects alone. So we'll just maybe increase the brightness up a little bit, increase the scale up to like 125. And then we will repeat edge pixels and just blur this thing out a little bit. And then I'll go and change the transfer mode from normal to add. Now just place this under here to kind of create an ambient light, maybe scale up to like 150. And then we will also tighten this up by increasing the contrast. And then maybe we'll change the color from that kind of yellow to a more orange color. Something like that, maybe blur it out a little bit more. And then I'll just kind of scale it up like this. And then we'll just decrease the main background a little bit, maybe decrease the brightness. Maybe something like that, maybe 100 is fine. So something like this, something very ambient, something very basic. I also wanna go into the flicker and change the flicker speed and amount to 25. So we just have some random animation of the flares here. And let's go and get started with the whole disintegration fire effect here. So first things first, I'm gonna bring in all of our mats. So I'll bring in the emitter map. And we don't need to see this, so we'll just shut it off, bring it below here. And then I'll bring in our text reveal because that's pretty much the most important part here. This is our text. And then we will, first of all, make this a 3D layer. Also bring in our heat map. Shut that off as well. And then I'm gonna go into the emitter map here and make it sure it's a 3D layer because particularly requires these to be 3D layers. And you'll see why in a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and create our first particular layer. We'll call this Sparks Main and hit OK. And we'll apply particular to this thing. So now we gotta tell Particular to emit particles at certain sections only here. So this is what our emitter map is for. So we'll go to emitter, and instead of emitting at a point, we'll tell Particular to emit at a layer here. So we'll use the layer as a reference. We'll go to layer emitter, we'll select our layer as our emitter map, 
and the emitter map needs to be a 3D layer. Otherwise, particular will give you a warning to make it a 3D layer. Layer sampling will tell it to use the particle birth time. And then for the layer RGB usage, we'll set it to none for this particular case. So we really need to turn up our particle amount to like maybe like a million or so. And then you'll start to see that the particles are only being emitted based on the emitter map here. So I'm going to change the velocity to like seven. And this is where you can really see that the particles are only being emitted at our mat. And this is a pretty good start. I'm going to go and maybe just go to the particles tab and change the life from three to about maybe one second. And then I'll keep the size to five for now so that you can see this. And I'll change the color from a white to kind of like an orange sparky color. And then I'll also change the opacity of random to about 25%, size randomness to maybe 40%. And then transfer mode, you know, keep it to add. And we'll also maybe just add it to everything overall. So right now our particles are being burned in at the same areas where the text is kind of disintegrating and disappearing anyway. So this is a pretty cool effect here. So now let's go ahead and manipulate this thing. I'll go to physics. I'll change the gravity to about negative 100. And that will just kind of raise everything. In my particular case, I want to create the sparks and move it to the right here. So we'll go to the wind. We'll change the wind direction to maybe, uh, maybe 175 that would just push everything to the right and then I also maybe want to increase the wind to maybe about negative you know 95 or something and then maybe z maybe um, negative 50 just to add some variation in the z so kind of get this interesting disintegration effect here so I think that we can adjust this maybe the wind to 250 so we have this nice burning effect here. So now I'm gonna change the size to about maybe uh, 1.5 will be okay. So it's very, very small. I don't know if you can see this or not. So maybe just set it to two, but essentially we want to make it very, very small. We want to turn on motion blur for this layer. And that would be the key to kind of smoothing this all out here. And then I wanna apply a glow. So the glow is gonna be the key feature to kind of making this thing look like fire. So we'll apply glow and maybe adjust the threshold and the intensity. And I'll add another glow and this will be the main glow here. And you want to adjust the threshold so that you get the, the kind of shading or color that you want. Depending on the threshold, you may get a hotter color or a cooler yellow color. So just adjust everything here. To kind of just match what you're going for and this is pretty much all experimentation this is why this is the, kind of the fun area here so this is what we have so far just kind of sparks flying across and i think we can do away with some of the particles so we'll just divide by two and that's what we got here and i kind of want the particles to stop emitting a little sooner so as you can see we emit our text disappears right around this time here. So this is where I want the particles to stop emitting. So we'll go back into our, our emitter map here. So around 308. So 308, I'll just shut the particles off around this point here. So right here, that's when it stops. We'll go back here into our main comp and as you can see, it stops right around there. Now, lastly, this thing's looking a little bit too smooth. There's no turbulence. There's no kind of that, that nice twirling effect within our particles. Uh, so we'll go into the, the turbulence field right here. And this is what this is for. So we'll change the effect position to around 250. And that will really just mess this thing up and give it more of that turbulent kind of flamey look. And we'll change the evolution speed to around 20. So what we have now is this kind of nice twirling effect and this kind of fire movement going on. And if we enable motion blur for the whole composition, you can kind of see what that looks like. Kind of sparky here. We'll just tweak the threshold for a more burning color. And as you can see with motion blur turned on, it kind of makes it a little bit larger. So we'll change the size from two to 1.5 or something like that. Just like that. 
We'll also duplicate our sparks here and we'll call this one our small sparks. And for this, we'll increase the amount maybe to a million at this point here. And then we'll also change the size from 1.5 to one. So these are just the smaller sparks to kind of fill in the gap here. And we'll also change the opacity to maybe around 80. And we'll also add some random seed to this. And this just gives more variation here. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and focus really on the text here because our text is kind of very hard to see. And I kind of want to give it a pseudo 3D look. So for this particular case, I could be using my 3D extruder script. I could be using element 3D. But in this case, I think that it's okay to just kind of cheat it a little bit because we're kind of on a tight turnaround time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate the text reveal here. So the second copy, I'll apply a curves effect to this second copy. We will decrease the brightness a little bit and I'll call this extrusion and I'll go ahead and duplicate this thing. Actually, let's go ahead and just parent this to uh, our main text here. So we'll right click, go to column and make sure that parent is selected and we'll just pick up the extrusion to our text reveal so that they're kind of linked together. And then we will go ahead and hit P on the keyboard, change this to like one. So we'll push it back in Z-Space by one pixel. We'll duplicate the extrusion maybe five to 10 times here, depending on what you're going for. Bring it down, hit P on the keyboard, and we'll change the extrusion seven to two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And that would just kind of create a pseudo extrusion here. So maybe we can change this to like five, 10. Um, 15 so the increments kind of depend on how many copies you have here and this is kind of how the extruder script is created as well it just kind of automates this process so what you have here is a stack of 3d text that kind of gives you that 3d look so for the top here I want to go ahead and apply a bevel alpha and that would just help us differentiate from the extrusion and the actual main text. So we'll set the light angle to zero. We'll set the edge thickness to maybe like 1.5. We'll set the light color to this nice orange color. So now we have this pseudo 3D text. Let's go ahead and animate our camera real quick. And this is just gonna be a basic zoom in kind of uh, camera transition. Call this camera. Maybe we should just scale up our background here. Just scale it up like this. And then we'll start at the beginning and, you know, we'll hit a keyframe for the position and we'll move to around uh, the five second mark and we'll just push this in, maybe something like that. Now, as you can see, we have our nice sparks. Let's go ahead and work on our flames here. So I'm going to go ahead and select the main sparks, duplicate it, and I will call this the flames. I would drive that underneath the sparks and I'll go into particular. We'll change the size to around five to be a little bit bigger. And I will just temporarily shut off the glows for now. So let's just work on the flames here. I'm going to solo it, turn off transparency and I'll go to the effects and presets and type in vector blur. We'll drag in two copies of this blur. So we'll drag in the first copy here and we'll drag in the second copy and make sure that they are above the glows here. We want it to glow afterwards. So we'll, the first one will be set to natural. The second vector blur will be set to the perpendicular type here. So I'm gonna increase the amount. And this is pretty much just pure experimentation here. So increase the amount, maybe increase and play with the smoothness to get kind of a flamey look, very smooth look. as best you can, and then play around with the perpendicular one. This will really smooth things out for you. Something like this, we'll add it back into our scene. You can't see it too well, but we turn in our first glow. Now you can really start to see the flames here and we'll just play around with the threshold. I want it to be kind of a really hot red turn on our second glow and uh, play around with the threshold. You want to get some variations of kind of this hot orange red as well as these nice uh, kind of yellow highlights. 
increase the radius, maybe decrease the intensity to 0.7 or so. And uh, we kind of have our flames. You can work more on this, but I think this should kind of give you a basic idea on how to create the flames. And for this, maybe we want fewer particles. So maybe we'll just divide this by two and maybe we can increase the size from five to like 10. So we kind of have this more intense, maybe eight will do. So we get this nice fiery disintegration effect. And just for variation's sake, maybe we want this flame to be a little bit different. Maybe we want to change the, the win and Z to maybe uh, negative one. 10, maybe the X to 275, maybe the win in Z to negative 60, you know, just add some variations to the flames here. Something like this. And this is looking pretty good. Of course, you can fine tune this a little bit later. Now, as you can see, our text is being disintegrated, but it's looking kind of flat. There's no like initial burn or anything like that. So what I want to do is I want to use the same emitter map here. So let's drag it in a emitter map. Remember, this was uh, the area that we wanted to kind of emit particles. So in that area, we can, uh, let's just solo it right now. This is what we have. I'm going to go to the effects and presets, type in fill, and we'll just drag a fill into the emitter map, and we'll just fill it with a nice kind of orange color. And this is going to be the initial burn. We're going to overlay this on top of our text here. So we'll drag it above our text reveal and we'll just solo it and we'll make sure that it's a 3d layer as well we need this to be a 3d layer so right now you kind of see what we're going after here we're kind of creating this kind of a lava grungy uh area here where the text is starting to burn now obviously we don't want this to stay on forever so we'll change the opacity of these things so hit t we'll move forward just so that we get a little bit of burning here hit opacity keyframe, and then we want it to kind of die off. So right before it cuts off, because remember the original uh, composition cuts off eventually, we'll set it to zero at this point. So it kind of just burns on and then starts to fade off. And uh, we can tweak this later. So we'll go in here, go back into the main comp. And as we can see, it starts to kind of burn on initially. And then it starts to emit particles. And then the kind of burn in disappears. Maybe we want it to disappear a little bit sooner than that. And, you know, we'll just easy ease these keyframes here. So hit F9. So as you can see, we get this pretty nice burning effect on our text. I'm gonna go ahead and add a glow to this burning area here. We'll just tweak around with the threshold. And then maybe increase the radius a little bit. So we get this really nice heated part of the text. Finally, I'm going to be adding the kind of heat distortion or heat waves that you see when, you know, it's a very, very hot day outside. And this part is actually very easy because we already have our map. So we'll go into the layer. We'll create a new adjustment layer. And we'll call this one heat waves. And we'll go to effect. Actually, we'll just search it here. We'll, call, we'll go and find displacement map. Drag it into our uh, heat waves adjustment layer. We'll set the vertical displacement to zero. And uh, we'll go and select our displacement map layer to be our heat map, remember? That was the kind of red particle map that we created. And we'll change the size from five to maybe like 1.5 and we'll be selecting the red channel if you use green particles use green if you use blue particles use blue in this case we'll just use red and if we just kind of scrub through this we can kind of see that we're getting some kind of like heat distortion in our text here in our whole scene because of this displacement map here so this is a pretty clever effect so before we make the finishing touches i want to go ahead and thank our sponsors over at squarespace for making this video possible today squarespace is the only one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional online website store portfolio they have over 20 highly customizable professional design templates with their click and drag interface adding content is a breeze and starting at just eight dollars a month you can get a free domain name if you sign up for a year you can start your free trial of squarespace by going to squarespace.com 
And when you do decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use the promo code DOJO2 to get 10% off the life of your order and support the dojo. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. So for the finishing touches, I want to go ahead and kind of make it a little bit faster here. So I'm going to use my Dojo Toolkit script, which you can get for free absolutely at thecreativedojo.net. And this doesn't really do anything spectacular um, that After Effects can't already do, but it will just make it a little bit faster for us to do. So um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new letterbox. And this is kind of a, since we're creating a movie kind of trailer look, I just wanted to add some letterbox into this. I also want to add a quick grain layer here. And that's pretty much it for this tool. I'll just drag the grain underneath the letterbox, shut it off for now, and I'll create one final adjustment layer for our color correction and color grading. We'll place it right around here, call this CC, and I'll go into the curves effect, apply a curves, and we'll also apply a tint effect. Shut that off for now. I'll just kind of create a basic contrast curve here. I want to make it pretty contrast. I want to go into the greens, maybe increase the greens and the highlights a little bit, but pull it down in the middle. And that would just kind of make the highlights a little bit more yellow. We'll go into the blues, maybe play around with the blues a little bit. And then we'll increase the tint to around maybe 10%. So we have something like this. Very intense kind of look here. Now quick tip, our text is kind of looking okay. We have a nice kind of texture to it. Uh, but really quickly, if you select your text here, the text will be at the very top of the text. Actually, we should have done this for pretty much all the extrusion copies. But if you apply a glow to the texture here, and we'll set the radius to zero. Let's go into the threshold and, and decrease this a little bit. And you can kind of see what's happening here. We're kind of creating a kind of inner burn within our text. Maybe we can increase the intensity or decrease the intensity to like 0.5. And uh, that's kind of just gives it a nice kind of burning effect on top of it. And we can duplicate this and then increase the radius on this to uh, maybe uh, 32. Increase or play around with the threshold here. And then intensity to, you know, we'll just leave it at that. And we get this really, really nice burning effect. And I kind of want our text to kind of disappear a little bit faster. Because at this point here, you know, our flames are pretty much done. But we kind of have this left over here. So we'll go into the uh, text reveal. And uh, we can always play around with time remapping. So right click, go to enable time remapping, you know, maybe hit a keyframe right around here. And we'll just speed this up a little bit. Hit a keyframe here. We'll just put this place in time. We'll make it occur faster. So this is a normal speed and then fast forward right around here. And that should get rid of any lingering bits and pieces. Lastly, maybe I can add a curves effect to this text layer at the very front. It's kind of a little bit too dark. Maybe we'll just increase it a little bit. Maybe something like this. This is pretty cool. And just like that, we have a very, very nice little animation with our flames going on. Now, as you can see, our burn layer, we forgot to set to add. So that kind of uh, initial burn right here that we created. Make sure that's set to a blending mode. Maybe like add or, you know, some other type of blending mode. But make sure it's set to a blending mode so we get this really, really nice blend of those. I'm just going to rearrange my workspace here and I'm going to go ahead and create just a few more atmospheric kind of uh, elements to kind of enhance the scene. We'll create a smoke a particular layer here. I'll call this particular dragon particular and we'll just solo it for a faster workflow. We will go to box. We will set this to maybe around 50. We'll move this to the left of the composition. Uh, we'll go into the emission extras, maybe pre-run set to 100. Um, and we'll also go to the physics here. And uh, make sure that the air, when it's set to like 500, we really want this thing to move to the right here. Maybe a 450. And we'll just raise the Y a little bit. We'll make sure that um, the emitter size is a little bit larger. 
maybe particles per second to around 15. And uh, we'll go to the particles. We'll increase the size. We'll change the particle type from sphere to cloudlet. And then we'll decrease the opacity here. So we just get this nice big fume of smoke. And we'll set the life to around five. One thing that I noticed is that I didn't play around with the opacity or size over time here. So make sure that you know or your, your particles kind of fade off when they die. Smooth that out. So it kind of just fades out. We'll unsolo it. And we'll apply it underneath our flames. And this we want to be kind of like a dark orange color, kind of this dark, kind of smoky feel to it. Something like that. You can see it more in the RAM preview, but we kind of get this atmospheric smoke right around here. Maybe we can decrease the opacity to maybe like 0.8. Just some atmospheric smoke. We'll duplicate this. We'll call this ambient sparks or ashes. And uh, again, we'll just play around with the random seed change the size down to like uh, maybe two. And I uh, will go into the opacity, set it back to maybe uh, 80 or so. Change the particle to kind of that sparky color here. Make sure that motion blur is on for those smoke layers as well as the particles layer. And uh, let's see here, maybe uh, size to 1.5. Size randomness to 25, opacity random 30%, and then particles per second, maybe we'll tone that down to around 10. So we just have some ambient particles flying around. We have some heat waves and smoke flying in the background. And we'll go into our sparks here and make sure that these have opacity over life. We'll just toggle that down and we'll just draw a nice kind of curve, smooth that out, uh, copy it. Go into our sparks here, our main sparks, and go into the particles opacity over life and just paste that in as well as the flames here. We want the flames to kind of fade out. So we'll go into the opacity over life one more time and just hit paste. And now our particle flame should die out. And I know for sure that the flame should die out a little bit sooner. So we'll set the flame life to maybe 2.75. Sparks should die out in around um, maybe 0.9 for the small sparks. And for the main sparks, maybe 0.8 for the life. I also want to offset the smoke and spark just so that there's already a lot of smoke and spark already in, within the scene. So I'll just move that forward and extend time here. So let's go and do a quick RAM preview. So just like that, we created a really, really interesting and nice dynamic transition here. We have our sparks, we have our flames, we have our you know, disintegration effect, we have a nice ambient background. And this is achieved pretty painlessly um, if you do it correctly and remember that you can always change the timing of things and change how much particles are being emitted as well as when they're emitted and at what areas they're emitted just by using uh, maps here so by using maps in conjunction with with particular you can get some pretty interesting and really really nice fine control over where the particles are being emitted and such so it's a very very handy tip to know really really practice using mats and maps within after effects in particular they're very 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 powerful also, the flames could be using a little bit more tweaking in terms of the physics and the glow. But again, the secret to this is the glow and the color correction. You can you know, play around with that yourselves. But essentially, this is how you create this kind of burning title transition. And just remember that anything that you type in the logo source, anything that's in this particular composition will be right here being disintegrated. Everything's procedural. Everything's automatic. All you got to do is just change the local source composition in the contents of it. So this is pretty much how you create this scene. Remember to read the articles at the creativedojo.net. There'll be more tips in the article down below. So that's pretty much it, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial. My name is Vincent Nguyen from the creativedojo.net, and I'll see you guys next time.